The world of business has always been marred by cases of fraud. It's not uncommon to hear of cases of bribery and corruption, money laundry, forgery, use of forged document, but the reason I am talking about this particular scandal is because of the sophistication of the crime and the manner in which it was perpetuated. It was quite a high-profile bribery scandal involving the Airbus Group and various nations across the globe, carried through Airbus's intermediaries spread across the world. Investigation for this case was coordinated by three nations, France, the UK and the US, with the first preliminary investigation opened on 20 July 2016 on charges of bribery of foreign public officials, misuse of corporate assets, breach of trust, conspiracy to defraud, money laundering of the proceeds of these offences, forgery and use of forged documents. The company used various techniques to carry out these acts sponsoring sports teams belonging to airline executives, acquiring luxury estate properties for the use of influential individuals, acquiring companies belonging to airline executives at inflated prices, recruiting non-experienced spouses of key executives as business partner using a straw company. A straw company here refers to a company which legally appears to be the owner of a business, but in reality is only a front used to cover the real owner. Another technique used by Airbus is that they provided luxury travel to foreign officials within the United States. From an investigation which started in 2016, and which was initiated by the company itself, through its internal audit of 2016, the European aerospace manufacturer, Airbus, was found guilty of bribery allegations and an agreement to settle was reached with the US Department of Justice on 31 January, 2020. The company was asked to pay a fine of nearly 4 billion euros to settle these bribery charges. One would wonder why the company would report its own deeds in the internal audit. Well, the company was smart to have done so. This was a strategic move which saved the company from paying a fine which would have costed almost twice as much as what was finally agreed to be paid. The follow-up investigation after this internal audit report was carried out by a collaborative effort between the French, the British and the US governments, who also ended up being the three beneficiaries of the fine charged on Airbus. France was compensated with 2.1 billion euros, the UK with 984 million euros and the US with 526 million euros. The Department of Justice DOJ qualified this settlement as the largest global foreign bribery resolution to date. So, who, or what is Airbus? Airbus SE is a European multinational aerospace corporation founded in 1970. Airbus designs, manufactures and sells civil and military aerospace products across the globe. It is the second largest aerospace company in the world, after its biggest rival, Boeing. The company's total consolidated revenue was more than $63 billion in 2018. And in 2021, it had an unaudited revenue of over $52 billion. The Airbus Group was gradually formed following the merger of three European entities, Aerospatial Matra, Daimler Chrysler Aerospace, or DASA, and Constructions Aeronauticas SA, or CASA, in 2000. Airbus SE, the parent company of this group, is Associates Europea SE, with registered office in Leiden, the Netherlands, and operational headquarters in Blagnac, France. This gives direct and indirect control of the group's activities and entities to Airbus SE, stake in Arabu's capital held by state shareholders like France, Spain and Germany, has since 2013 been limited to 28%. The Airbus Group underwent numerous restructurings between 2004 and 2016, the period under investigation. In April 2017, Airbus Group SE adopted its present name of Airbus SE, from Airbus Group NV following these restructurings, the activities of the Airbus Group are split between the following three divisions, Airbus Commercial, Airbus Defense and Space and Airbus Helicopters. Airbus Commercial is responsible for activities regarding the manufacturing and sales of commercial aircraft. This division is controlled by Airbus SAS, which is headquartered in Blagnac. Airbus SAS is one of the two largest commercial aircraft manufacturers in the world. In 2016, its activity alone generated 73% of the Airbus Group's turnover. 
Given its dominant role, the investigations of this bribery scandal was mainly focused on the activity of this division. The investigation revealed that the company used intermediaries in 16 different countries to carry out these bribery acts, including China, the US, France, the UK, Ghana, South Korea, India, Russia, the UAE, etc. The ingenuity behind the crimes committed by the company was just brilliant. The company had a machinery and system in place to do its bidding. Between 2008 and 2015, Airbus was involved in willful and deliberate acts of fraud and bribery which they had concealed for so long. The Strategic and Marketing Organization, or SMO, was used to push their corrupt agendas and bribery scheme which involved offering and paying bribes to decision makers and other influences, including to foreign officials, in order to obtain improper business advantages and to win business from both privately owned enterprises and entities that were state-owned and state-controlled. The case revealed some astonishing practices Airbus undertook to gain improper business advantages. Admissions and court documents revealed that in order to conceal and facilitate the bribery scheme, the company engaged business partners. For example, for about two years in China, that is between 2013 and 2015, knowingly and willingly, Airbus engaged a business partner to make a bribe payment to Chinese government officials in connection with the approval of certain agreements in China with regards to the purchase and sale of Airbus aircraft to state-owned and state-controlled airlines in China. In order to conceal this bribe payment, Airbus did not make the payment directly to the business partner in China, but instead made payments to a bank account in Hong Kong in the name of a company controlled by another business partner. This sounds confusing, right? Well, that's how sophisticated their bribery plots were. And that is not all. Prosecution documents also showed that Airbus's then-parent, EADS, sponsored a Formula One team owned by top officials at AirAsia. AirAsia is one of Airbus's largest customers. At the time of the investigation of the allegations, both the CEO and chairman of AirAsia were even temporarily suspended. In Colombia, Airbus would give millions of dollars as agent commissions for purchase of jets by the country's airline called Avianca, and within this commissions, some would go to senior executive at the airline's parent, Avianca Holdings. In Sri Lanka, it was reported by the Serious Fraud Office or SFO in the United Kingdom that Airbus hired the wife of one of the executives of Sri Lankan Airlines as an intermediary in the negotiations for the sale of aircraft to the airline company. And Airbus would mislead UK Export Finance, an export credit agency in the UK, about her gender and her name. In all this, they would pay her company $2 million. The investigation covered the periods 2004 through 2016. Airbus Commercial's activity is supported by three export credit agencies, COFACE, now BPI France, in France, UK Export Finance, or UKEF, in the United Kingdom and Euler Hermes in Germany. These agencies allocate between themselves, by country and client, the roles of principal insurer, principal co-insurer and reinsurer. In order to obtain support from these agencies, Airbus is required to provide them with certain information about the contracts in respect of which a guarantee is sought. At the end of 2015, a compliance review established that certain declarations made to UKEF regarding the use of commercial intermediaries within Airbus were incomplete. Since Airbus had a contractual obligation to correct inaccurate information communicated to the export credit agencies, it first drew these irregularities to the attention of UKEF in January 2016, before presenting a more detailed report in March 2016. Following the communication of this information to UKEF, UKEF also informed COFACE and Euler Hermes of the disclosed irregularities. The initial findings submitted by Airbus to UKEF showed that in some cases, Airbus had provided UKEF with incorrect or inaccurate information concerning the identity of the commercial intermediaries it had used or the amount of their remuneration. On 1 April 2016, Airbus disclosed to the SFO in the UK that it had identified issues in its UKEF applications. UKEF also forwarded the information provided by Airbus to the SFO, having given prior notification of this to the company. 
On 6 June 2016, the Parquet National Financier or PNF, in France received an alert from the Director General of the Treasury, on the basis of Article 40 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, passing the information which UKEF had brought to the attention of COFACE. This led the PNF, on 20 July 2016, to open a preliminary investigation on charges of bribery of foreign public officials, forgery and use of forged documents, conspiracy to defraud, breach of trust and money laundering of the proceeds of this offence, and misuse of corporate assets committed between 2004 and 2016. The investigation was entrusted to the Office Central de Lutte contre les Infractions Fiscales et Financières OCLCIFF, in France. A joint investigation team agreement was then later reached between the PNF and SFO on 30 January 2017 in order to establish a coordinated investigation strategy, to facilitate the collection of evidence and the technical analysis of data, to ensure the sharing of relevant information between authorities. According to the ITAR, which stands for International Traffic in Arms Regulation, under Part 130, Airbus was required to declare information to the DDTC, that is, the Directorate of Defense Trade Controls. DDTC regulates the export and import of U.S. defense articles and defense services. The provisions of Part 130 necessitated that information relating to political contributions, fees or contributions paid in connection with this sale of defense or defense services be declared to the DDTC but in the numerous applications filed by the company to export defense articles and services to foreign armed forces, between the years 2011 and 2016, Airbus knowingly and willfully violated this ITAR and also the Arms Export Control Act AECA, by failing to declare accurate information to the DDTC related to commissions paid to third-party brokers who were hired to solicit, promote or otherwise secure the sale of these defense articles and defense services to foreign armed forces. Airbus's voluntary collaboration in the investigations and other acts of remediation, helped mitigate the penalties and charges levied on them by the DOJ. The shady deals mentioned earlier falsely boosted the company's profit by more than $1 billion, that is why at the break of revelations of these crimes, investors started launching lawsuits against the company. A group of investors, called Stichting Investor Loss Compensation, filed a lawsuit against Airbus in courts in the Netherlands, as they said, Airbus failed to adequately disclose these events in its financial statements over the period from at least February 2014 until January 2020, and, as a result, investors in Airbus purchased their shares at an inflated price and suffered significant damage. They also claimed that the company also failed to adequately disclose details of a potential settlement. The lawsuit demanded Airbus to pay damages summing up to $300 million. It is true that this scandal episode tarnished Airbus's reputation and also forced the company to make changes to top management, but the future is still bright for the company. The company should thank its stars that this settlement case allowed them to avoid criminal charges, which would have completely crippled them by prohibiting the company from seeking public contracts in Europe and the United States. According to the French prosecutor, Jean-Francois Bonnet, this settlement action is to be considered by Airbus as an opportunity for them to turn the page. So, what do you make of this scandal and the fine charged on Airbus? Was the fine commensurate to the crime? And do you think it would make the company change for the better? Or you just think given how much revenue the company makes annually, more fines should have been charged so as to inflict more financial strain to the company? Let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye.